Everybody, welcome back to EVE Online. We are going through continued exploration fits for uh, all of the various factions that you might want to explore. No pun intended on the exploring. Yeah, you got it. All right, so uh, we've been through the Amar, the Galente, the Kaldari, and the Minmatar, and now we're getting into the Sisters of Eve. And as you can see here, I've got an Astero loaded up, and the Sisters of Eve ships themselves are pretty expensive, and so odds are good that unless you are relatively well off and secure in your um, in your skills and exploration, you probably will not be uh, looking to buy or fly one of these ships. So if I hit the information on this. I can see, let's see, requirements. That this character that I'm on right now, it requires both Galente Frigate 3 and Omar Frigate 3, among some of these other lower level skills. Now this is, because it's a frigate, its skill level requirement is pretty low. It does require you to be Omega, um, which uh, this character is not right now, so we're just gonna look at it in the simulation. But just to give you an idea, right now, an Astero ship is 64 to, well, pretty much 75 million, just for the ship by itself. Um, and that doesn't include all of the stuff that we're going to throw on it here. Now, I've got the best of the best, or at very least the highest level gear that we can fit on there, except for this micro warp drive. I, I went with the cold gas. And I can't honestly explain why, but uh, but we'll start here. And so this is a, a good bit more advanced than any of the other like Amar or Minmatar ship uh, options that you have to go with. But there is some added utility here. So Sisters of Eve ships are generally focused on uh, exploration, but with a, sort of a, a little dash of uh, combat thrown in. So what does that mean? That means that you're not going to have many gun fittings on here, but they are going to be drone capable. So right now I've got, you know, 15 different drones in here. They're all light drones and I'll be able to control five at a time, which is if you compare that to the other ships that we were talking about previously, um, you're looking then at three on those other ships that you can control and five that you can carry versus five that you can control and 15 that you can carry on this ship. Uh, and so your DPS overall is, is much better. And oh, I always, I thought it was maybe, yeah, maybe I was looking at it wrong. Anyway, so as it is right now, we're looking at per the simulation about 75 DPS. And again, we're going to follow the same basic philosophy that we followed on, on some of the covert ops ships. Uh, Sisters of Eve ships allow you to use Covert Ops cloaking devices, so we'll use one of those. Um, I've thrown on here the Sisters Core Probe Launcher just because we're talking about La Creme de la Creme here, but I think you're probably fine if you want to save 40 million ISK right off the top and use the regular Core Probe Launcher with Sisters of Eve scanner probes instead. So. If you hover over it, well, let's see here. Let's just bloop. All right, well, it'll, yeah, all right. So if we hover over it, it tells us what our base sensor strength is. So that's 97. So we could get rid of our cargo scanner. Actually, that's a cargo scanner too. Let's, we could get rid of, uh, oh shoot, that's not a ship. Come on, Abe, get your, get your act together. So we could do something like that and that raises our base sensor strength to 99. But I'm not sure that difference is worth it. So we'll just stick with the cargo scanner. This is a 65 kilometer cargo scanner. It's more expensive than uh, what was in there previously. But anyway, so we've got that. There's a little bit of a trade-off there. You've got your cloaking device here. You've got your relic and data analyzers. Uh, at the Tech 2 versions, you've got your propulsion mod, which is, I've chosen a micro warp drive for this. Some people choose afterburners because your micro warp drive uh, can't get bubbled. I'm, I'm forgetting the specifics between micro warp drives and afterburners. Some of them can be webbed, but not 
and some of them can be like you can get stuck in a warp bubble and so your micro warp drive will not work in a warp bubble but your afterburner will for example um, so we've got the basic setup over here in your mid slots you've got four lows now one option is like I said before to avoid increasing your signature radius and making yourself easier to target oh, I should have turned off my ringer I apologize um, you can uh, you can go with nanofiber internal structures to decrease your align time as much as possible. Um, another option is to split it. Now that, now that we have four slots to play with, you can actually really do some damage here. And so we can get down to 2.69 second align time if we just kind of split the difference. Now we increase our um, signature radius by 11% times two, but that doesn't actually mean 22%, but it increases our signature radius by, uh, by a bit. And we can see just how much here. Uh, there we go. Signature radius is 244 with both of those, 210 without. So yeah, it's not nothing, but it uh, it's worth thinking about. All right, so if we do that, we can take half a second off of our, almost half a second, I guess 0.4 seconds off of our line time and still pick up some speed bonus and give up our structural uh, hit points. And again, I've got small gravity capacitors here. And so this is the first ship that, uh, like the frigate level, Sisters of Eve exploration ship. And there are a lot of different variations on what you, you know, what you see here. If you want to, I've got uh, e-warfare drones in here, which just to look, they're ECM, so if, if you have them out and floating around you and something targets you, pops out and says boo, uh, they will make it, they will automatically engage that target and ideally make them drop their target of you. So um, if I'm remembering correctly, it may just make it so that it's much harder for them to target you if they haven't yet. So food for thought. Anyway, so I've got some of those, I've got light drones, of the thermal variety and the EM variety in there. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. So, so yeah, so that's the, that's the Astero. Now, if we were going to switch over, Sisters of Eve also has a cruiser level exploration ship, which is the Stratios. Now remember, 113 million for the Astero. You can probably knock off 40 million if you, if you want to use a regular, uh, uh, non Sisters of Eve probe launcher. So you're looking at like 60 to 80 million for an Astero fit, plus 10% or maybe even more, maybe 20% for insurance. Then you've got your uh, Stratios, which is a cruiser, much bigger. And I didn't have the skills to fit it with what Eve University was recommending. So I had to throw on a medium ancillary current router to give myself more power grid. That said, they recommend instead of that that you use a sentry damage augmenter uh, instead but I was like a good 15 points out of the power grid so you can see it's a it's a difficult ship to fit but let's walk through it so you get because you're you're a bigger bigger ship and you've got a bunch of high slots you can fit three medium pulse lasers on there the website suggests either tech 2 uh, lenses the scorch or the conflagration uh, and so you can load those in there and that's not nothing that gives you let's see you know all the damage is coming from there so if we just put some of these on there there we go your dps goes up to about 200 if you get in the right damage range and we'll drag and put that there all right so overall you're looking at 290 or about 250 million if you want to get rid of the Sisters of Eve launcher. Um, and then we get into some other items here that you may not have seen and a little bit more involved ship fitting. So we've got an afterburner on here instead of a micro warp drive. Um, you've got the uh, omnidirectional tracking link too. And what that does is we can see it right here. Now I've, there's a whole bunch of things that it does, which is why I've just pulled this up instead of trying to remember off the top of my head. It increases explosion velocity bonuses. It decreases explosion radius bonuses. Gives you a fall off bonus, an optimal range bonus, and a tracking speed bonus. And that's just across the board. Now if you load it with one of the scripts, 
then it gives you much more specific bonuses to one of those things and pulls off uh, pulls off the bonus from the other. So, so yeah, so that's something to help your drones. Not you specifically, but your drones. It improves the optimal range and tracking of all drones. Okay. And it improves all of your, uh, yeah, I guess fighters are, are, are drones anyway. So, so all right. So we leave that on there. We've got a cargo scanner for 65 kilometers away. and We've got our standard relic and data analyzers. You've got a damage control too to help uh, increase your defenses. Armor plates which overall increase your defenses, energized adaptive nano membrane, <clears throat> the Tech 2 version, and that provides additional bonuses to defense, an armor repairer, which doesn't do a whole lot for you, all things considered, if you're repairing 368 hit points every 10 seconds out of 40,000 hit points, that's, that's not, or out of, I guess, 10,000, either way, it's not a lot per, per 10 seconds. And then you got a drone damage amplifier. Now I've got, they suggest that you carry three of each of these Tech 2 uh, lenses for your guns. And uh, I've got 16 of the probes. And then in my cargo hold, you've got quite the assortment here. So I've got, the way I've done it, and I should, probably should remove five of these or provide enough room to put more E-War uh, Hornets in there. But I've got five sentries. Uh, sentry drones. I've got mi mid-level drones, low or oh, shoot, what are they called? Light, medium, and heavy. So a full assortment across the board. And I have enough bandwidth here to control four heavies or five of pretty much anything else. And then I've got some salvage drones in here so that you can clean up the the area that you're you're uh, clearing out. So that's the Stratios fit. Again, it's a very expensive ship, and if you consider the um, the philosophy that you want to be playing or flying ships in exploration that you, uh, you're willing and easy to, to lose and you aren't going to, you know, lose sleep at night because you died. Um, these may not be the choices for you. And again, just to touch on it, I've got some, some, uh, rigs in here. I've got a Trimark armor pump, which increases my overall effective hit points as to the armor that's there. And this one increases the resistances to explosive. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's the Astero and the Stratios. These are ships that you, you will be able to run different sites with than you would with your regular sort of Kaldari ship, right? So you're much tougher. You have much higher combat capability. You can take sites that have enemies in them. Um, I'm not sure whether you can take a ghost site, but still a lot more effectiveness here. If you're running around in one of these ships, you're a lot less likely to just be attacked randomly because you can actually defend yourself. So is it worth 250 million? That's up to you. So that's it for the Sisters of Eve ships. There's another one. Um, it's like a battleship level. I don't get into it because not many people fly it. It's called the Nestor. Um, but food for thought, these are kind of your last options. There are a bunch of other faction ships that you can get into, but these are the, the only ones that are really specifically geared towards exploration, at least in since I played most actively previously. So um, keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. Check out the Aaron Gamer podcast over on the website or on iTunes or anywhere you watch or listen to podcasts. Uh, it's a podcast I host with some friends of mine. Thanks for being here. I got moved into another room. I don't know if you can see. I'm, I'm in the middle of hanging sound tiles behind me because I got a bit of an echo in here. But uh, I got a new desk set up and everything's good. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.